So far we have learned how to send an HTTP GET and POST request to the server to fetch data from the server and create data on the server respectively. Now when sending HTTP requests to the server, things can go wrong. You may encounter errors. For example, when you are sending an HTTP request to the server and if you do not have a network connection, there you might encounter errors. Another example is, let's say you are sending an HTTP request to the server and the resource which you are looking for does not exist on that server. There again, you will get an error, the 404 error. So before we talk about editing and deleting records on the server, let's first understand how we can handle HTTP errors in our React application. Basically, when we send an HTTP request to the server, in the response, we get the status code. Here, I am on a Wikipedia page which explains the use or the meaning of the HTTP status codes. If I scroll down, here we have some status codes. Now, the most common one status code is this status code 200, which means OK. Basically, when we send an HTTP request to the server and if that request is sent successfully and we get the desired response, in that case, in the response, we get this status code 200. Let me show you that. So let's go to VS Code. And here in the app.js, we are sending the get request. So here we are sending the get request. And here we are receiving the response. Now, before I return this response.data, let me also go ahead and log this response. And now let's go ahead and let's take a look on this response. Let me open developer console. And here you can see an object has been logged. If I expand this object, here we have the request and you can see the status code as 200 because we sent a GET request, the request was sent successfully and we received the desired response. In the same way, we also have this status code 201, which means created. When we send a POST request to the server to create a new record and if that record is created successfully, in the response, we get this 201 status code. So any 200 code simply means success. Now, sometimes you might also get 400 or 500 status code in the response. So 400 status codes basically means some error has occurred. For example, we have this 400 status code, which means bad request. We have this 401 status code, which means unauthorized. We have this 403 status code, which means forbidden. So basically you get this 401 or 403 status code when you request a resource to which you do not have access to. The request is sent successfully but in the response, you will get 401 or 403 status code, making it clear that you're not authorized to access that resource. Then we also have this 404 status code, which means resource not found. When the resource which you have requested for, if it does not exist on the server, you will get this 404 status code. And you might also get 500 status codes if you have some problem on the server. So the 500 status codes are basically the server errors. So when sending HTTP request to the server, you might get some error. And instead of showing that error to the user, you might want to handle that error and show a meaningful message to your users from your React application. In this lecture, I'm going to simulate this 404 not found error. So let's say from our application, when we are sending a get request, instead of requesting for user.json, we request user.xml. Now we don't have this XML file on the Firebase server. So if I save the changes and if you go to our application, you will see that this loading spinner is continuously displayed. And here we have an error, the Exios error. So basically this is an object. This is an error object. And if I expand this object, you will see we have this error message request failed with status code 404. So let me drag it a little bit. So here you can see the message request failed with status code 404. And if I expand the response, here we should have our status code as you can see here and the status code is 404. And we want to handle this error because if you see an error has occurred in our React application and our application has hanged, this loading spinner is continuously displayed here. And we don't want to show this behavior to our users. So let's see how we can handle this error. Let's go back to VS Code. The error is happening when we are sending a GET request. So here, now this exios.get, it is going to return us a promise. That promise will be either resolved or rejected. If the promise is resolved, we will get the desired response. But if the promise is rejected, we will get the error. And we can handle that error using catch block. 
So basically, when we get a resolved promise, that is handled by this then method. But when we get a rejected promise, we can handle it by using this catch method. To this catch method, we need to pass a callback function. And this callback function is going to receive the error object which has occurred. And for now, in order to handle this error, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to show an alert window with the error message. So this error object which we have received for this callback function, it has a message property. So we want to show that message. And we also want to set this loading state to false. So I'll copy this line of code from here and let's paste it here. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me refresh the page again. So you see, now we are handling that error. We don't have that error logged in the console. We get this alert window where it shows the error message. If I click on this OK button, we don't see anything in the web page because we are sending a request to user.xml which does not exist. So we don't have any response data, but at least our application is not hanging now. So in this way, we are handling the error. Now here we are showing the error message to the user in the alert window, but instead of showing it in the alert window, we want to show it in the web page. Let's see how we can do that. For that, the first thing which we need to do is we need to create a new state. Let's call this state error or error message maybe. And then let's create a state updating function. Let's call it set error message. And to this, let's assign use state. And initially, let's set this error message to null. Let me copy this state updating function. And the first thing which I'm going to do is when we are sending this get request, before sending the get request, we would want to clear all the previous error messages. So if there is any previous error which has occurred, in that case, that error message will be assigned to this error message state. And when we are sending the get request again, before sending the get request, we might want to clear the previous error message. For that, let's again use this state updating function, this set error message function, and there we set this error message to null. And then in the catch block, instead of showing an alert window, here I'm going to set the error message. So instead of using this alert function, I'm going to use set error message state updating function. So it is going to update the error message state to actual error message. And now we want to show this error message in the web page. So here we want to show this user details component if data is not loading and also if there is no error message. So here I'm also going to use error message state. And then let's also use this end operator. But if there is any error, in that case, this error message will be a truthy value. It is going to be a string. In that case, we want to display an H3 element, which will display the actual error message. So basically the value stored in this error message state, and we need to wrap it within curly braces. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let's refresh the page. So here we are sending a get request. The get request failed because we don't have users.xml on our Firebase server. So it has returned the 404 status code, the 404 error. And when it is returning the 404 error, we are displaying this error message. Now let's say we want to display this error message in the center. For that, let's simply go ahead and add the style attribute on this S3 element. There, first we need to use a set of curly braces. Inside that, we need to use another set of curly braces. And there, we can set this text align property to center. Let's save the changes now. Let's go to the web page. And now that error message is in center. But if we don't have any error, that means if we specify the proper file name, which is users.json. And now if we save the changes, we should get the desired result. So in this way, we can handle HTTP errors in our React application, or to be more precise, when we are working with promises. When we are working with promises, a promise can be either resolved or rejected. The resolved promise is handled by this then method and the rejected promise, that means the promise which has returned an error that can be handled using this catch method. Now, if you are using async await, in that case, you cannot use this catch method. In that case, you will have to use try catch. Now explaining async await and try catch block is out of the scope of this lecture. But if you want to learn more about that, you can find a lot of articles on the internet. 
and I will also share a link in the description which you can go ahead and check in order to learn async await and try catch block. Now here we are using this Axios library, this Axios object. This Axios object throws a real error whenever some error has happened while sending the HTTP request. But when we are using the fetch API like we were doing here, fetch API does not treat error codes as real errors. Fetch API will not throw a technical error if we get back an error status code in the response. In order to handle errors, when we are using fetch API, we will have to throw an error manually. Let's see how we can do that. So for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to comment this code here and let's uncomment this fetch API. And let me cut these two lines of code from here and let's put it at the top before we are calling the fetch API. All right. Now, as I mentioned, fetch API does not treat error codes as real errors. So here, if I change this JSON to XML, and if we go to the web page, and if I refresh the page, in the console, we are not seeing any error. Here in the message, it says that we have sent a GET request to this URL, and that resource was not found. But we are not getting any actual errors. And this is the problem with fetch API. So in order to handle these kind of errors using fetch API, we need to throw the error manually. So once we have the response, what we can do is we can check if the response is OK. So that means everything has went well. And here before this response dot OK, let's use this not operator. So that means if the response is not OK, in that case, we want to throw an error. For that, we can use throw new and then the error object. And to this error object, we can pass the error message. Here we can say something went wrong. Okay, so here we are throwing an error manually using this error object. And then we can catch that error using the catch method. So again, this catch method is going to take a callback function. That callback function is going to receive the error object which has occurred. In this case, it is going to receive this error object which has this error message. And here, let me copy these two lines of code from here and let's specify it here. With this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me refresh the page. So here you can see we have this error message. Something went wrong because this is the error message which we are throwing from here. So this is how we can handle errors when we are using the fetch API. But in case of Axios object, we get the actual errors. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.